tell the story of the Texas military force example. We tell the story of World War II as the Texas National Guard participated in, which is still a very big story. It gives us the 36th Infantry Division in the European Theater, the 112th Cavalry in the Southwest Pacific, the 124th Cavalry in the China Burma India Theater, Company C, the 193rd Tank Battalion in the Central Pacific. Uh, it's still a lot to put our arms around, uh, but it's a much more narrow focus than you know, the entire National Guard of the entire United States Army uh, in World War II. Well, the museum is still a relatively young institution. The decision to create it was only taken in 1992, and it didn't open its doors until November of 1994. As long as there's Texas, there will be Texas military forces. They will continue to make history in both peace and war, and we have to collect that history as it's being made. We have to preserve it, and then we have to tell the story. And so we are in a constant state of expansion, evolution, reinvention, uh, which is not always the case for a lot of museums, which have a much more fixed storyline. Well, we have several exhibit venues here at the museum. We have, of course, a very large outdoor exhibit. Uh, armored vehicles, tanks, uh, self-propelled guns, towed artillery, uh, aircraft, helicopters, uh, rockets, those sorts of things are outside. Uh, inside the museum, the, the backbone is what we call the Great Hall. And it's where we have a lot of our macro artifacts on exhibit, again, tanks, uh, staff cars, jeeps, half tracks, and mess trucks, uh, those sorts of things, about a third of which actually run, they function, and we use them in programs. Uh, off of the Great Hall, we have the Texas Military Forces Hall of Honor, uh, which also houses some of the most uh, fascinating historic flags in our collection. We have a very impressive uh, exhibit of distinctive unit insignia. Uh, this is called the Massaro Collection after the officer who uh, who put it together. He's passed away and his collection was put on loan to our museum. It's famous worldwide. People come here from all around the country just to see it. Uh, we have an exhibit on the history of the 36th Infantry Division in World War I when it was created and World War II. We have an exhibit on the Texas Air National Guard. Uh, we have our 19th century exhibit that traces the history of the volunteer militia units of Texas from that first militia muster in Austin's colony, through the Texas Revolution, through the public, through the battles on the frontier with the Indians, the Mexican-American War, the role of Texas troops in the war between the states, the Volunteer Guard, which is the state military force after the Civil War, uh, through the Spanish-American and Philippine-American Wars. The newest exhibit is the one that opened in September of 2011 on the 10th anniversary of the terrorist attacks in New York on the Pentagon. Uh, it tells the story of the Texas military forces in the global war on terror, uh, as well as the Cold War and the history of the 49th Armored Division, in addition to the various peacekeeping missions uh, that the Texas military forces have undertook uh, since the dawn of the 21st century. The last exhibit that we have here at the museum uh, is the one that tells the story of the Lost Battalion in the Pacific, uh, which is the 2nd Battalion in the 131st Field Artillery uh, that uh, was detached from the 36th Division after the Louisiana Maneuvers in late 1940 and sent into the Pacific to reinforce General MacArthur's forces in the Philippines.
battalion was forced to surrender and it disappeared into the hell of the Japanese POW camps. Uh, some of the men were sent to Japan proper, most were sent to Burma, uh, where as slave laborers in the most horrific conditions imaginable, These guys spent about 42 months in captivity, suffering humiliation, torture, both mental and physical, and they had to endure that for so long, and many of them watching their their best friends and brothers in arms dying beside them in, in, in front of their eyes. They were forced to build the railway of death, the bridge over the River Kwai, and all of that sort of thing. Uh, so uh, that's the one exhibit uh, because of its graphic nature, we actually have a warning sign up on the door. The Lost Battalion was filled with honorable men, and they sacrificed a lot and went through a lot, So, uh, and they fought for their lives so they could defend this country. Here at the Texas Military Forces Museum is is perhaps um, no not perhaps it is the most rewarding thing that I have done along those lines because here uh, I am in support directly of our armed forces uh, I interact with them on a daily mission and I get to try and help them and sustain them in what they do to let them know that they are making history that their history is going to be remembered, it's going to be preserved, their story is going to be told, even though most of them don't think of themselves as making history, as being historic figures, because for them, history is World War II, it's Vietnam, the, the heroes who came before them, they don't particularly see themselves as the, the new representatives of that same history, but they are. And so that's something that we get to do, we get to help build and maintain their esprit de corps uh, and it makes me feel like I'm part of the effort even though I'm not in a uniform. Uh, I'm part of the war effort in Iraq and Afghanistan. I'm part of, of the job that our personnel are asked to do uh, and in that way uh, I not only get to take care of the veterans and educate fellow citizens, I get to support the troops. Uh, and even if my contribution is just like one teeny weeny little thing, and that's what it is, one teeny weeny little thing, uh, it is still, I think, one of the most meaningful things that I could spend my life doing.